Okay, good morning, everybody. We'll begin the HATS meeting. Uh, first thing I would like to do is if you're interested in who all is here, I think at the right of your screen, you can click on and see the attendees. Um, so I'd like to welcome everybody. And the first action would be, we have the coordinating committee meeting minutes from September 24th. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve, Larry Shiflett. Thank you, Larry. Is there a second? I'll second, Gene Fauci. Thank you, Gene. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. We also have the technical committee meeting minutes from September 3rd in your packet there for information. And we'll move into tip modifications. And is it my understanding, John, you're gonna handle this? John Owens? Uh, yes, I will be. All right, thank you. Um, I'm just gonna go over two of them real fast. Item 30, which is the US 22 Rock Slope Emergency Project. Okay. And this increase was for relocation of the temporary fencing, vinyl painting, and the eradication. Um, the other project is Riverland Safety, Im Safety Implementation Project, item 41. And that was an increase to the P phase for additional archaeological efforts. And that's um, those are the main increases that I wanted to go over. That's it. Any questions of John? Okay, and it, and we have no amendments. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, then we'll move down into um, program and plan updates. We'll start with Mike, Ted, Andrew. Thanks, Jeff. Um, since our last meeting, we've had the the fall 2021 uh, regional bike count, bike med count program. Uh, it occurred uh, October 10th through 16th. We had a total of 52 counts across the 21 locations. Uh, so at, at HATS, we, we have, you know, our normal traffic counting duties were kind of in the, in the course of, of purchasing new equipment. And some of that new equipment most likely will enable us to, to expand our, uh, our, our bike ped counting capabilities. So hopefully, I think the plan is that in the near future, we are able to do more comprehensive and, and kind of statistically significant um video counts and then maybe supplement them with our normal uh volunteer efforts so hopefully some some more uh kind of an expanded data collection effort as it when it comes to people walking and biking in the region uh the other thing I, i'll mention just briefly because we'll get into it um in more detail later in the meeting is the transportation alternative set aside program uh that app the Recent application period closed October 16th. RTP implementation work group reviewed and evaluated the 10 applicants we had in the HATS region. And again, I'll give you more details and we'll go through some of the recommendations from the work group and then the tech committee later in the meeting. That's all I had for the bike pet update, unless anybody has any questions. Any questions of Andrew? Okay, we'll move into safety and Tim teams and Steve? Sure, thank you. A uh, couple of things here. Uh, one, we've, we've talked a number of times before that, that we are working with a consultant um, to help us with a system-wide uh, safety analysis. That, that work is nearing its completion, and I believe uh, it's probably likely that at the February meeting, we'll be uh, showing you some of the results of that analysis and how that works. And relating somewhat to that, um, and the, the next item on the agenda, which is tip development. We're also uh, working with the consultant and the district on the uh, HSIP candidates uh, to use the uh, safety 
funds that are specific to the to the tip to better um, use those dollars made available to us. So that's an ongoing effort. You'll hear a little bit more about that tip development here in a minute. Um, another item that we discussed at the tech committee meeting, as I had mentioned before, that um, a few months back we became a Waze partner. We're actually also looking at uh, Google Maps as a uh, Google Maps actually owns Waze, um, so we're looking at uh, probably partnering with both. And the the main element of that is that uh, we will soon be reaching out to municipalities as they're doing construction projects and doing a road closure. We're going to report that. To those uh, GPS services, so that you know, in an effort to help steer traffic around uh, the closures when they happen. And one of the questions that came up uh, at the tech committee meeting that also be includes not only road construction, but the question was raised of whether or not um, closures for particular events, like a Capona uh, or something like that, could be reported. And they, the answer to that is yes. So. Um, again, in the upcoming months, uh, if you're representing a municipality or you have interest or questions about that, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, and I think lastly, um, we're the, the Tim Team program that we've talked about many times um, is evolving somewhat. It's evolving towards more of a safety education uh, um, with the emergency providers in hand. So. We, we've started talking to, to them and to AAA and other safety organizations about how we best um, engage in a safety education program moving forward. So it's just the evolution of that group uh, a little bit moving into that, focusing on that area. So with that, I'll say that's the uh, summary I have for safety and TIM teams, unless there's any questions. Any questions? Okay, we'll move into 2023-26 uh, um, tip development. Andrew? Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so, I get, as everyone knows, hopefully we are kind of right in the middle of, of tip development for the upcoming uh, tip that we'll be hopefully adopting in June. Um, Kind of the first step of that was we had staff receive from the district staff what we call the carryover tip. That's essentially everything um, that's in Steve. Can you go to the packet and go down to that, uh, like that color coded one I had? So the carryover tip is essentially everything that's required to continue the work that's already started or has already been planned. So whether it's So it's everything that's either been in started or or was planned on starting in these years of the tip, either in the you know this the years 23 and 24, which are actually the second two years on the current tip, or in in the 12 year plan. So um, Pat staff reviewed that with with the district. Um, there's basically what it's everything we expected it to be except that there's one new project and that's, you can see it's kind of highlighted in, in yellow there, kind of in the middle of the screen. Uh, that, that's essentially 581 resurfacing um, and I think some concrete work. Uh, that's a, a newly identified uh, project, but a very high priority that needs to happen. So um, it, was, it was recommended by the district that we just include that because it, it needs to move forward. So once we kind of had had those things kind of um, once we went through that level of analysis of what we needed to finish or we already started our plan, we kind of now see, can you scroll down to that allocation table? This table essentially shows you what we have left. So what what do we have to program new projects on this tip on this tip update? Uh, as you, you can see, going down through some of these kind of different pots of money have a significant amount in there and some does not. We, we essentially looked at 
anything under three or four hundred thousand is not enough to to take a, a project through all of its phases through you know through completion so we didn't want to program any any uh new projects based on some of those lower funding amounts um so in essence we looked at at you see those top two numbers, the top two categories are, are the two bridge categories, a, a fairly significant amount of money there. Um, some money in CMAC, which is our, our congestion management air quality. Uh, some money in, in safety, that's HSIP that Steve just mentioned that we're working with a consultant on, on how, to, how to best spend that. Um, and then, uh, some things a, a little bit of money in in the urban fund at the bottom that's our stu fund so at that point we worked with the district and and got uh bridge bridge and other kind of asset management candidate projects we also looked at our our pipeline developed a set of recommendations and we had an rtp implementation work group meeting on november 4th um to kind of lay out how how to best um, you know program this these dollars. I'll say that the, I guess I'll mention a couple highlights from that because um, as everyone hopefully knows that a new infrastructure bill was passed right around that same time. We have received I would what I would call significantly more money, which means we need to revisit a lot of these decisions. Unfortunately, those numbers have not been finalized yet, or at least not provided to us finalized yet. So we're still working through, we basically have to go back to one of those early steps. And we're now going back through the pipeline and working with the district to identify what can we, what can we pull out of the pipeline to turn into a viable project? And, and how does that mix with some of the districts uh, priorities in terms of bridges and, and pavement and stuff like that. So I, I guess, um, I think Nate Walker's on here. Nate, do you have anything to add? Uh, just that, you know, I, uh, it's a, we're working on a tight deadline here. I'm trying to get the draft tip put together uh, by the end of the year. Um, but we we definitely welcome the increase in federal funding that we got. Um, so we're a lot of that is geared towards uh, towards bridges. Uh, there was a significant amount of uh, bridge funds that were were part of the uh, infrastructure bill. So uh, actually a new funding type just for bridges. So uh, we we work with our bridge unit uh, to identify. Uh, a host of new bridge candidates for to be included as part of the this tip update so and we're going to continue to work with the rtp group i believe we're meeting next week to to go over um candidates and you know try to try to work as quickly as we can the timing of the the federal bill was not ideal but uh definitely a good good influx of funding for us to to implement some more projects in the the regional program. Nate or Andrew, do we have any idea when we, what on time frame and when we will get the guidelines? Because I know in talking to a lot of counties, the other federal, you know, new CARES Act money, they still don't really have clear guidelines. So do you have any idea when these guidelines are coming through? I believe, uh, well, it looks like I'll let Larry chime in. <laughs> yeah, good ah, morning. Just Larry has all the answers. <laughs> uh, no, I wish I did. <laughs> uh, the one answer is we're certainly thankful for additional funds. No question about it. Um, timing, yeah, it wasn't perfect, but we'll we'll figure a way out um, to make it all work. But we we did provide what I would say is department estimates to each of the MPOs, RPOs. And when I say department estimates, that's based on historically what we as a, a state get as part of the national pie. Um, we, those, most of the funds are coming through those, those formulas to the state. 
So I think our our draft estimates that we've provided, and again, that and that's literally within the last week, week and a half to the MPOs, RPOs, um, should be pretty solid. USDOT did just as recently as yesterday um, put out what their apportionment tables are, so that that's helpful. Um, it's not the the full apportionment because um, at the congressional level we're still operating under a, a continuing resolution through February, so that complicates things as well a little bit. But I think the draft estimates that we provided are are ninety eight percent sound. And we can work off of them, um, just knowing that they're department estimates, they're not official. They do match up pretty closely with uh, what was provided in the apportionment tables that came out yesterday. So I don't, I don't think there's um, any game changers that we're, we're necessarily waiting for. The one thing that didn't come with those tables yesterday was all the, I'd say, the subcategories of the surface transportation program funds which is your transportation alternatives, your STU, which is the urban funds. So in the message that came out yesterday, it was said within the next week or so, we should see those as well. So again, that's the, the short story. How's that? <laughs> it works. It works. I've got a little... Just keep your liquid fuels out of, out of it. <laughs> yes, sir. Gotcha. <laughs> got it. Andrew? Yeah, and I, I'll, I just wanted to follow up on, I, I guess, Larry and Nate there. Um, we, we are absolutely working towards kind of what we can program based on those additional funds. I will say that Nate mentioned a meeting with the implementation work group next week. I, I don't think that's a, I, I, we had tentatively discussed that, but I don't think we're still at a point yet where we can present any any real information, um, but we will absolutely be in touch with the work group. You know, I, I, as you guys can hear here, we're we're operating kind of on a tight timeline, and we're trying to be as responsive and proactive as possible. So um, I will remind everyone though that our kind of the time frame moving forward, and. Mr. Shiflet has any clarifications on this timeline, feel free to interrupt me, but you know, our normal timeline of, you know, in February, we will be asking for official action on the draft tip to move to air quality. In April, we will then ask for a, a, a official action to move to public comment. And then in June, we'll ask for formal adoption of the tip. So while we're getting all of this you know, we, we basically got more than a, well, based on the draft numbers, we're looking at an additional almost year of funding. So it, it, this is not like one or two projects that we need to go just float to the top of the list. It, it, this is like a significant um, reconsideration of the tip. So, but the timeline did not really change at all. So we're, we'll be back in February with, with some more solid information. We'll be meeting with the implementation work group in the meantime. If anybody from this committee has any questions in the meantime, or even would like to sit in on that meeting, I don't think that would be a problem. And feel free to contact me or Steve or Diane or anybody. Yeah, I'll just add, you're right. The, the timeline hasn't um, shifted, but I will say, certainly we want to follow our, our normal process where, where we can. So. Um, I know this is likely being recorded and can be played back and some of my staff may not like it, but if we need some of that time after December 31st in the early next year to make sure we're inclusive and transparent and getting the right projects in the mix, uh, please make sure that's what we're doing. And I know that's exactly how you guys will do it because you guys always do an exceptional job. So, Yeah, yeah and Andrew, I just wanted to add, sorry, I, I, forgot that we haven't really nailed down the, uh, the meeting, but I, I guess I just want to, uh, you know, reassure everybody along with Andrew that, you know, we're, we're working from a very uh, solid and comprehensive list with uh, what has been the outreach of with the municipalities on the, the RTP uh, and the pipeline. So we have, you know, a lot of local priorities and we also have the, the asset priorities um, and then we have the things that, that are in the pipeline to yet be completed, you know, for the 
for the CMP. Um, but you know, we're we're utilizing as much much of the funding in that as we can. So for the next tip update, you know, we we will look to implement some things that are that'll be wrapping up. Um, you know, it's an ever ever living document. It it can be changed. It, it always changes. That's part of the administrative actions you see, um, and that's part of the amendment process. So. Um, but we'll, again, we'll, we'll be open, transparent with projects that are added and, uh, and come back with the recommendations here in February. It's Jean, I, I have a question. I am wondering, uh, first of all, I'm very glad to hear that we're getting, it looks like an additional year of funding for these projects. It's so important and we certainly need them. I am wondering if there's any consideration um, being taken for this, it sounds like a fact um, that the 83 bridge will be told uh, and there will be a pretty serious construction going on there in what sounds like to be a relatively quick timeline. So I'm just wondering if there's any information on that and if our other counties, um, you know, have any thoughts on that. Yeah, I can certainly chime in. Um, I'd say that that's still a candidate bridge. We're still continuing to, to work through that process statewide. So all nine candidates are still exactly that. Um, based on some public input that we've had to date, we have made some changes on the, the bridges on the I-80 corridor where um, on the Eastern side, we had two that were likely 20 to 25 miles apart. Um, where originally the plan was both directions for toll, now it's one direction only. Um, and then on the west side, just kind of the same situation. So again, when you when you look at the overall, I was going to hit on some of this in the, the status reports, but I'll, I'll do it now. Um, we're As a state, we're getting about $4 billion in new federal funds. Um, the, the key to know there, you've probably seen some numbers out there that Pennsylvania is receiving $13 billion. And that is factual. We are receiving 13 billion over five years, but what we have to remember is um, that about nine billion of that was what we would have planned on statewide and as MPOs and RPOs um, from the FAST Act that we were operating under and from um, planning at flat federal funding using those FAST Act numbers. So again, that 13, nine billion of it was things that we were planning and had plans for in our 12 year program, the 4 billion is new highway and bridge funds. Um, it comes in a couple categories, which are mostly on the national highway system, um, safety. There isn't a whole lot new in the, the surface transportation program. And uh, of that 4 billion, the other part of, that we have to realize too is it's, it is spread out over five years. So it's not that we get all 4 billion up front and can spend it all right away. So roughly in the, the first year, it's about 640 million that the state gets for highways and bridges additional statewide, and then close to a billion as you, you get into that fifth year of the, the bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, we've utilized our existing formulas for every penny of that 4 billion. So that means each of our 23 metropolitan rural planning organizations gets their fair share of, of that pie, um, both on the, the core program funds, as well as uh, what Nate mentioned on the, the special bridge program funds as well. And I think I'll, I'll leave it there for the time being. Larry, I, I so appreciate what you just shared. And I, I guess I'll, I will rephrase the question. I am wondering is that as the TIP is being examined, um, and what is going, and I understand that lots of it is what is already planned. Um, is there any consideration being taken into projects that will, that, that may cause incredible um, congestion uh, and possibly um, trauma for the public as they're driving if 83 construction, uh, 83 bridge construction is going on at the same time as some of these projects? And, gotcha. and I, I don't know that that has to be answered today. Um, but right. I am I am wondering if that's in, in general something that is being considered. Yes, yeah, I can I can hit on it quickly, so Thanks, we're not uh, holding things up. But certainly, as we're looking at each of the nine bridges and any major project we do, um, whether it's part of this 
potential tolling project program or even a, another major bridge project somewhere else in the Harrisburg area or even um, somewhere else in the state. Certainly when you, you get into that, you do, do need to look at diversionary routes um, as part of the whole maintenance and protection of traffic, even when we're doing that from an engineering standpoint to make sure that we're adequately addressing that from a safety standpoint. Okay, thank you. Thanks, appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, Larry. Anything else, Andrew? Okay, we'll move into the transportation alternative set aside program and I believe we need to take action there, Andrew. Yes, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So Steve, if you can go to the, let's go to the web map. So included in the meeting packet, uh, was a, a meeting summary. I think I put this in the supplemental info kind of memo at the right after the agenda as well. So the link's in there twice. Um, to this this story map, the, I mentioned in, in my bike pet update, we had a recent um, close of an application. Sure. Recent uh, close of an application of an application uh, period for the transportation alternative set aside program it used to be called TAP or or uh, transportation enhancements. It's essentially the same program still. Um, in the Hats region, uh, we are designated a large MPO under this. Well, but we're designated a large MPO, and as that large MPO. We get $465,000 a year to program projects through this uh, through this program. Um, it's essentially for bike and pedestrian infrastructure with a few other kind of ancillary um, project eligibility categories. Hats actually, I guess it would have been at the June meetings, I think we took action to approve, approve the same project eligibility categories that we've always had, which are slightly reduced because the state, the statewide round allows things, allows some other things like stormwater management and, and some other kind of ancillary transportation things. And uh, the, the staff and the committee has always kind of felt like we wanted to focus these, uh, our project selection on things kind of the, the core transportation uh, infrastructure for bicyclists and pedestrians. So under this program, we had 10 applicants, Steve scrolling through them, uh, HAT staff reviewed them with, with the district. We then had a meeting in, um, in November to, uh, to evaluate uh, each, each of these 10. Um, so, as an aside here, the, the, the TAP program require, it has a requirement for a, an objective um, evaluation process that kind of, kind of the score dictates what gets selected. Um, so we went through that exercise. We actually had each project scored three times, once by a HAT staff member, once by a PennDOT staff member, and then once by a, a county or Harrisburg City uh, representative, and he, we had them. Um, we divvied the projects up so that nobody was was reviewing a project that's kind of under their jurisdiction. So um, our, our kind of task is, you know, I mentioned that four hundred sixty-five thousand dollars a year. Uh, we select projects with that amount of money in mind. Everything we don't select then gets forwarded on to the statewide round for consideration along with um, all the projects from areas that are not designated large MPOs and with every with all the other projects that large MPOs didn't select. So I guess, Steve, why don't we go over to the meeting summary now in the packet and go to that table, scroll down. No, it's the next one down. It's the next. That's the tip. It should be right after this, I think. That's the current draft tip. Schedule information. 
So scroll down to the tape and find it. So again, this is an everybody's meeting packet. This is a meeting summary that hits on some of the um, discussion points from the from the meeting where we reviewed the, the applicants. Uh, you can see on screen here the we we developed kind of a consensus score uh, along with the funding request and then the recommendation. Um, altogether, the we recommended selecting two projects, one in in Cumberland County and Shippensburg. Uh, one in Dauphin County in Hummelstown uh, that actually was the recipient of an RTP implementation grant for the design of the project. So uh, those two things kind of lined up well. And then there's there's two projects that that say supported the statewide round. Those were high scoring projects, as you can see, but as you can also see, the funding requests were two plus years of would, would would take up a lot of our funding two plus years essentially for each of them. So the, the committee, uh, the, the feelings of the committee were to forward those on with, with positive comments and a recommendation that the state select them. Um, and then the other projects there would again be forwarded on to the, to the um, statewide round, but since they didn't score as high, they would not receive a, a kind of a recommendation of, of for selection in the statewide round. Um, so uh, the, the technical committee saw this, uh, provided a recommendation to select the two projects. I guess, similar to the TIP discussion, we have now received what we're anticipating to be an increase and a fairly significant one in 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 our tap allocation. Uh, it went it, it's potentially going from about four from four hundred sixty five thousand to somewhere north of a million a year. So most likely we're going to have to um, we're going to have to revisit some of this. But I've gotten no indication from central office that they're that their timetable is changing at all. And our large MPO selections are due in early January to them. So uh, at this time, I think our best course of action is to essentially do what, what we were planning on doing before we had, an, we had a potential increase in funding, select the two projects that we, that we kind of know we, we approve of, forward everything else to the statewide round. And then depending on what does and does not get selected, we could always revisit project selection then because essentially we could always select TAP projects as long as they've gone through this process. And now that they all have, we can, and, and we don't really have another choice because we don't have finalized numbers. So I don't think it's it'd be appropriate to select additional projects. Um, so we kind of have to stay the course here, select what we what we thought was going to be a little just shy of two years of funding. If if that funding increase is finalized, that's actually not even going to be one year of funding. So I think we are going to want to look at additional project selection, but that's kind of we're, we're going to have to kind of cross that bridge when we come to it. Does anybody have any questions? It's a lot. But... Any questions of Andrew? So to try to summarize that, I think Andrew's asking us to take action to approve the list that you see in front of us to move forward with that. And then after the state makes its selection process and we know the funding, we can come back and revisit this list. Correct. So is there a motion to do just that? So moved, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Is there a second? I second Gary Eby. Thank you, Gary. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And now we'll move into the uh, fiscal year 2022-24 UPWP, and we have action item there. Diane? Thank you. Um, in September, the committee saw this 
uh, draft and recommended that it be forwarded to FHWA and FTA for their official 30 day review and comment that has occurred. We received the comments and included those comments in the draft that was included in, in your packet. Uh, essentially, those comments were more text edits um, in nature rather than anything that changed what we were doing when we were doing it or the funding associated with it. So essentially, it's the same document. Uh, we did not receive any kind of requests for supplemental funds. Um, so that won't be included in our request going forward to PennDOT. Um, otherwise, it's essentially what you've seen before. Um, the technical committee recommended approval and forwarding on to PennDOT for, for the contracting process to, to begin. So any questions? Okay, is there a motion then to adopt our uh, HATS work program? So moved, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Is there a second? Nathan Walker, second. Thank you, Nate. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And we'll move into HATS Title VI Program Action and uh, Andrew. Thanks. Uh, another, this is another follow-up to the something we discussed in the September meeting. Um, earlier this May, we had our federal certification review. One of the outcomes of that was a corrective action regarding our HATS Title VI program. Um, we essentially needed to to repackage what we've what we've had. It was it, the, the elements themselves were not really an issue. It was more the packaging of those elements. Um, so in September, uh, we presented you guys and, and, and it was approved the remedial action plan that was submitted then to FTA as required. This is kind of the next step. This is the actual Title VI plan. This was also completed in September and was, was available for your review. Um, it has since been reviewed by PennDOT's uh, BEO office favorably. Um, so we're, we're asking now for action to follow the, the technical committee provided a recommendation to adopt the, to officially adopt the Title VI plan. And I guess that's what we'd ask, ask the, uh, the, the coordinating committee to do that. And this allows us to fulfill the obligations of that corrective action from our, from our, uh, our, our federal certification. Your motion to adopt our final HATS Title VI program plan. So moved. It's Jean. Thank you, Jean. Is there a second? Second, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Now we'll move into the SRTA designation resolution. I believe that's in our packet. Um, I, I can, I Andrew. can start that. Um, I think Beth Needham is on the is, is on the call. I, I and or uh, Eric Bugail. I I I'm, I think one of you two would probably be be best to summarize the resolution. Um, so. Yeah, this is Eric. Um, definitely, uh, what we're doing, of course, obviously, uh, the merger of uh, Rabbit Transit and, and CAT is occurring. Uh, we've had our first uh, two meetings of the SRTA board. Um, all of uh, CAT's assets will be managed by the SRTA. So uh, it makes sense that the designee be the SRTA. So we're asking that SRTA be the designation uh, for the federal money. Any questions? Is there a motion then to adopt the resolution? Gary, I'll make the motion. 
Okay, and I heard Gary. I'll second it. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. You now we'll move it in, into uh, funded studies and Steve. Yeah, I'll just, uh, I know several actual of the HATS members participated in the virtual public meetings for the I-81 improvement strategy here this week, Tuesday night and Wednesday night. Um, we, we had meetings both nights, but the, uh, I think an important thing to note is that the public um, review period is ongoing. Uh, in fact, if, if you didn't get a chance uh, to be part of those meetings, they're in the process of posting the recordings um, to the website, the I-81 Improvement Strategy website. And you, we even have an opportunity, part of those meetings involve the ability of participants uh, to vote in a series of polls in terms of their preferences for various alternatives and that type of thing. That capability is being worked into those recordings. So if you didn't have a chance to participate, but you're interested, you can watch the recordings over the next month and be part of that polling process, which will then be summarized. And then I think we're going to be um, at that point uh, at, in a position to basically finalize and then do uh, the, the final uh, public outreach for the adoption, basically, of the IE1 improvement strategy, which to us is almost uh, you know, an ideal timing with all this discussion of additional infrastructure monies um, for the interstate tip. You know, we're going to be looking there as to which of, well, you know, we're going to have this playbook of uh, projects uh, to hopefully integrate uh, right off the bat, which is always the idea here is to not have a long delay between the study and the implementation measures. So we hope to be moving into design. Uh, so we'll have a, a presentation at least at the uh, tech committee meeting in February on that to kind of give you the uh, more or less the final status and how we plan to move forward with that in the future. But it's in a it's in a good place. I would encourage you to uh, you know to watch those videos and you you can I'll, I'll give you a cheat. You can actually if, uh, scroll through the video, get to the polling, and answer the questions uh, as well. They they were both about an hour and a half long to give you an idea. Uh, so with that, um, that's the uh, my 81 improvement strategy summary. And then in terms of Gettysburg Road, I believe Aaron Trone from Lower Allen's on the call. Aaron, you gave a, a brief summary at the tech committee meeting. Do you want to share that uh, with the coordinating committee at this point? Sure. Um, we had our public hearing on November 22nd. We had a couple residents come out in support of the plan, which was great to see, uh, especially since it was unsolicited. <laughs> um, the board approved it and they amended our comprehensive plan to include the Gettysburg Road corridor plan, which will allow us to make some um, zoning recommendations next year and some possible changes. Um, and and uh, we're, we're really proud of it. <laughs> And we're pretty much done. So we'll be applying for our uh, funding reimbursement and we can close up this project. Okay, the last one uh, on your list of projects is RTP implementation grant. And the one main thing I wanted to bring your attention uh, to on this one, uh, and, and what I'm showing you is, uh, what the, from the tech committee meeting minutes, uh, you know, many will re probably remember that Derry Township was one of the recipients of an RTP implementation grant. There were two crossing improvements that they had requested and were awarded. However, they since decided to move forward with one of those two uh, with their own funds, and then they resubmitted a second crossing location and asked that HATS consider um, replacing the one that they funded in essence with a new one. So the work group and the tech committee um, reviewed all that information and this bottom italicized thing is uh, basically the finding of the recommendation out of the tech committee, which is that 
we allow Derry Township to move forward with the one remaining project that was on their original application, but to not allow a substitution of another site. And I think the primary concern there was we didn't want with this program being fairly new, we didn't want in the future applicants to feel that they could apply for something and then alter their application in the midst of the process of implementing and that. So that's what um, this was in the tech committees. Uh, that was the tech committee's recommendation. And I, I would ask if the coordinating uh, committee agrees with that, um, that we would then contact Derry Township, let them know that they can move forward and next year when we do the next round, if they wanna apply for this other location or other things, they could. But at this point, uh, the initial round of the RTP implementation grant for dairy pay for that one remaining crossing from their original application. Is there a motion to adopt the technical committee's recommendation? Skip Mammy, so moved. Thank you, Skip. Is there a second? Larry Shiflett, second. Thank you, Larry. Any further discussion? This is Toby. I have a question. So, why, if so, so as I understand what you're saying, they had two crossings. They advanced one of them on their own, totally with local funds, received funding for two, and then requested um, to do a different crossing with some of the funding they've received. That's basically correct, yeah. So like I, I, I understand the technical committee's comments, um, but on the other hand, like, you know, I could, I could see another side of it, which is um, denying the, you know, we're telling a municipality that if you advance a project with your own funds, and I don't know why they did that, maybe they needed to move quicker than or felt like they needed timing, to, yeah, was a timing issue Toby. yeah they needed to move quicker so they put their own funds up to do it um but you know then um you know in a situation like that like would a would a different municipality say hey after this situation well we're not going to advance a project and get something done sooner or put local funds in because we're going to lose funds as a result i mean i think this is maybe a little different than than the general discussion about somebody doing, um, you know, getting a project and then moving money from that project to a different project after the fact because they advanced the project totally with local funds due to timing. So, I I empathize with the township on this one, I guess. I would hope that when the township reapplies, uh, that that consideration would be given. I, and we've done that before with other projects, um, you know, when they've had to sort of lose their place, they, they, I think this board has kept that in mind and given them that consideration when they move forward. I would hope if this action were to occur, we would do the same thing here. Yeah, I, I I get the point, but then right. we have, then the township's got to wait a whole nother year to be able to advance a project that funds are available for now. What we're looking at in terms of the next, you know, all this discussion of new tip dollars and that kind of thing, I think what we are expecting to do in terms of this program is once we see at the beginning of the year what's going into the next tip, uh, we, you know, what projects are being funded. It's at that point that we anticipate advertising for the next round of RTP implementation. So just to give you an idea of schedule, Toby, sometime in the spring is when we probably expect yeah. um, to I announce the next round. Of yeah, just saying. I, yeah, no, I totally get it. I think, you know, I'm just, but I, you know, till you get an advertisement and then you go through scoring and then it comes before the committee, it'll be fall or winter next year till an award would occur. So it, it is basically a year delay. So, you know, for them to be able to advance the project, because they wouldn't, if they advance it with local funds, you know, ahead of time, it's, um, then they won't be able to get funds, you know, to be able to reimburse themselves. So I'm, I'm not, like, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not arguing with the, 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 
recommendation here. I, I could just see the other side of it from the municipality point of view. And when the municipality is willing to put their own local funds in to get something done because of a timing issue, um, I think that's a little different than somebody, you know, setting a different local priority on the projects and, and saying, hey, we, even though you awarded money for this project, we want to do a different project. And again, you make a very good point, Toby, and I think um, this board has, as I said before, I think this board sure. has been sensitive to that. And when we need to move projects forward, we've kept that in consideration and given people the benefit of the doubt when they make those alterations. And I, as I said, I, I would surely hope we would continue to do that. Any further discussion? Yeah, I, this is actually yeah, this is Michelle Tarquino. I'd like to chime oh, in to I, to that in, sure. given that I was also a member um, of the technical committee that made that decision. Um, given all perspectives, I do have to commend um, the HATS committee in moving forward with that decision to reevaluate, given it was more of a maybe a bait and switch, and we would want to prevent that from happening in the future. Um, there there may have been segments of roadway taken into consideration that um, would have been more or less safe than others. So we want to prevent that from happening in the future. So that that is one of the considerations being taken for reevaluation. So I just wanted to point that out for all members that may be joining in today. So thank you. Thank you for that clarification. You're welcome. Any other discussion? We do have a motion and a second. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Good discussion. Okay, we will now move into project development process and we'll start with Steve. Project yeah. pipeline. And I, I no additions to the project pipeline at this time, as Andrew indicated earlier. We're we're getting an awful lot of use out of it here with this tip process so we're quite pleased to have gone through this with the rtp and done a new outreach and and have a nice updated pipeline that we could use um, as these additional dollars became available but no changes to the pipeline um, well, I, I just want to remind everyone because we haven't done it in a while that anyone at any time can right. can submit a transportation need uh, it's right at the front of Pat's regional transportation plan.org. So if you have a, a local need or anything you'd like to bring to our attention, that's the avenue to do it. And that kind of starts the process. Whether you're a, lo a local municipality can submit that or even you know a regular old citizen can, can, uh, can submit anything through that portal. And that kind of starts that, that project pipeline process. So. Thank you. Uh, projects in development, John. Uh, I'll be covering that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Hey. Um, so, a couple projects I just wanted to highlight. Uh, one of them that you saw John cover in the actions, uh, the Riverland safety improvements. Uh, we had an increase there for archaeology. Um, we so they did the initial uh, test pits out there, and they had they found some artifacts. Um, so they had to move, they're moving into phase two of archaeology. Um, unfortunately, that really does delay the timing of the project. It pushes it back uh, approximately two years uh, just because of uh, working out there to essentially complete the archaeology work and then putting the report together uh, that we need to to get through uh, environmental clearance. But I will say it's uh, it's been pretty interesting. I think there are over 200 artifacts that they found um, out there. And I think the number just keeps growing. Um, but I'm hopeful at some point. Lost you. Lost you there. Nate. Are you there, Nate? Yeah. 
Nate, maybe if you uh, were having problems with the audio, if there's anything additional beyond uh, your <laughs> galaxy that you want to share. Oh, there. You're back. Sorry. I got kicked off for some reason. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where I stopped or where I got kicked off. Uh, you were saying that it was interesting that they found about 200 artifacts uh, okay. in the work that's, and how it extended the schedule maybe two years. Yeah. Nate, what's, I know this is up by Clark, I think, believe it's up by Clark's Ferry in Holderman Island. Exactly yeah. where, where did they find the artifacts? So as soon as you come off the Clark's Ferry Bridge um, on the right-hand side, um, when there's... You come off one in which direction? Uh, when you're coming going uh, west, so towards okay. State College, got it. Um, there's test pits on the right hand side of the road, uh, immediately right off the bridge, um, okay. and then a little bit further up, right across from the pilot, we have a few pits there. Um, got it. But they're essentially running in. They're running into the old canal bed, um, so it's right. it's filled <laughs> with artifacts. Right. So. Pretty, pretty interesting stuff. And uh, I'm hoping we can share some pictures, photos, or even the, the document with the group. It's, you know, something you don't see every day. Yeah, after high water, I've been up there. I, I hunt Holderman Island sometimes. I found them after high water. So that's no real, no surprise, really. Yeah. Um, the other project I wanted to highlight uh, was the Market Street Bridge. Uh, the project is currently out for uh, public comment. It is on, on the uh, PennDOT District 8 website uh, under the public meetings link. Um, one, one thing I wanted to point out with the information that's out there right now, uh, we've had some discussions about the information that's provided. There is a preferred alternative out there. Um, and I guess I wanted to clarify what the preferred alternative means. Uh, so the preferred alternative is really uh, the bridge and the type of improvements that we need to complete on the bridge. So it's it's more moving forward with the rehabilitation. Um, we will be updating the website uh, as soon as today with the options for the actual roadway and what it will look like when the project is complete. So that that information will be provided at at the uh, public meeting. That is scheduled for January 18th at the Wormleysburg Borough Office. Uh, there'll be additional information put out about that when it gets closer to the time frame. But just keep an eye on the website. I'm, I'm hoping it's updated today with those options for the roadway. I, I believe we're going to put up the, I'll say the top three options um, that, were, that were identified um, from, from the preliminary studies. So. If there's any questions on projects and design, I'll cover projects and construction in the next report. I'll just add, uh, Nate, I appreciate that, that there was concern expressed at the tech committee meeting and those adjustments that Nate just referenced are the department's uh, response to that. So we appreciate those changes that are being made. Anything else, Nate? Uh, sorry, I dropped out again. <laughs> no. Anything else? No, not on the projects and development. Okay. All right, then we'll move down into uh, status reports. And uh, Larry, you starting it? I can I can do that, and I think I hit hit on what I want to. I'll just say, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays to everybody. Um, this is always a time of year where you you look back and reflect. Wow, it's been a crazy not just a year but 18 months. And uh, I just want to extend my sincere thanks to the staff at Tri County and to this committee and the Tech Committee for all the the good work and hard work and hard decisions over the last 18 plus months. So again, thankful to be a part of all of it and uh, just Merry Christmas to everyone. All right, just a quick question, sort of following up on what Gene was talking about earlier. The department has not selected its consultant or the, the group for the bridge project, have they? Correct. Correct. That's still there, in work. There was a note. Yeah, there was a notice just put out, I would say, within the last few days um, to, to begin the process. We uh, think there's three firms potentially um, that had that initial interest that were, but uh, again, I think the RF, 
I went out uh, within the last two or three days. So likely sometime late winter, early spring, Jeff. Okay. Any other status reports? Uh, I, I do have the normal construction update. And okay. Hopefully I'm able to get through it before I drop out of the call again. Um, so just going to try to run through these since we are in stepping into the winter time frame. A lot of the projects are, are wrapping up for the winter, but there is still some work going on. Uh, in Cumberland County, we had the PA 74 bridge over Tort Spring. Uh, since the last meeting, that project is essentially wrapped up and, uh, and completed. Um, the American, uh, or I-81 American Legion uh, Memorial Highway resurfacing from milepost 26 to 37. Uh, we actually just completed the northbound and southbound uh, final course, wearing course, uh, except for the last half mile in the southbound direction. Uh, the reason was we essentially ran out of time, uh, but traffic will be okay running on that binder course over the winter. Um, we will be looking to complete some other uh, work related to the roadway, raised pavement markings, some rumble strips, and another painting uh, up to the December timeframe. Uh, the contractor will be back out there in the spring to finish that final wearing course. And right now we're looking to have that wrapped up uh, by July of next year. Uh, the King Street, uh, well, US 11 around the Shippensburg area, uh, that project is essentially wrapped up also. Uh, we have a project on SR 1010 Carlisle Pike resurfacing. Uh, that project was, was bid uh, earlier this year. Uh, they received notice to proceed June 11th of 2021. Uh, and that was uh, Pensy Supply won that bid at approximately 1.5 million. Uh, they, they're looking to essentially hit the ground running here uh, early next year. Uh, the one project that was usually a long update, but today a uh, very short one, uh, I-83 widening uh, completed. So I, I know uh, if Mike were here, he'd be very proud of uh, the project and how well it went. Uh, very smooth, um, very smooth and lanes changing and all the different type of traffic control configurations we had to move through. Uh, but that project went as smooth and as I'll say on budget as well as it could have, I think, for the size of project it was. Uh, next project I will hit on is the US-22 project, um, the River Relief Route, uh, coming from essentially Elmerton Avenue, going north to right around the, the Fort Hunter exit. Um, that project, the paving is wrapped up. Uh, they're working on some final guide rail installation, rumble strips, uh, some more of those raised pavement markings. Uh, and the contractor will be looking to install the mile markers uh, as part of this project in the, in the spring timeframe. Uh, the, another project, uh, the Paxson and Dairy signal improvements. Um, we actually had to make some revision to some of the plan sheets for design changes at the intersection. Uh, there's, there's some island work at the intersection of Paxton Street and 28th that, that were, uh, is ongoing, and we're awaiting the revised plans for some traffic signal interconnect modifications there. A uh, new project on SR3006 Chambers Hill Road resurface. Uh, this is a project we wanted to get out the door before um, a lot of the 83 widening uh, starts taking place. And that project uh, was bid back in the July timeframe with uh, Penzi Supply winning that contract at approximately $1.5 million. Uh, they had notice to, pre notice to proceed in aug on August 9th, and they've completed all of the ADA ramp ins installation. Uh, so they will be out there uh, in the spring working on the, uh, working on the roadway. Uh, big project for Perry County, uh, the 34 and 850 intersection. The physical work was completed back on October 28th and the final inspection. And that project is, is entirely wrapped up, open to traffic. Uh, the SR 34 just outside of Newport, 
the work on the wall uh, along the creek there, we were where we had some uh, some failure of the roadway uh, a couple of years ago with some flooding. Um, contractor has been working on a, a short-term weekend detours uh, and been using the temporary traffic signal installed in the work zone. Uh, they're looking to complete the wall work by mid-January, so the so the roadway would be. Uh, open back up and then uh, we'd be back in the spring to do the the resurfacing work um, on 22 William Penn resurfacing uh, this this project was on the westbound uh, let last year or earlier this year um, and is for the westbound lane essentially from the Dolphin County line up to around the uh, the bridges over PA 30 bridges over PA 34 uh, the contractor completed some uh, work on some of the center line up there, uh, some of the edge line, uh, just to maintain the roadway over the winter. Uh, and the contractor will be out there uh, in the spring to, to start working on that project. And then the last project is the US-22 bridges over PA-34. Um, they have started the work out there. They're, they've been working on the, the crossovers uh, for for traffic. So the eastbound traffic uh, will be moving over to the westbound traffic. And it's that I actually was out there a couple of days ago. They're, they're pretty close to having the uh, eastbound structure um, pretty well demoed, uh, the section over, over 34. So that's, that project is moving along, moving along nicely. Uh, they have a current completion date of September 15th of 2023. And that's all I have for the projects and construction update. If there's any questions, I can take them. Any questions of Nate? Okay, moving on. Nate, I don't... excuse oh, me, yeah. Nate. Uh, did you say when the uh, sound wall project on 81 is going to be finished? Did you? I, I missed that. Sorry, I did skip over that one. It is actually, it's nearing completion. Um, it's the original completion date was supposed to be this year, um, but it looks like they're just working on uh, staining of the wall panels on the northbound section. Um, but yeah, I can get the firm date of when we anticipate that being fully completed for you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, we'll move on. I don't believe anybody's on from the State Transportation Commission, FHWA, Gene. Yes, um, good morning, everyone. Um, just two really quick informational items. Uh, Federal Highway has set up an official website uh, that has information on the new bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, this is gonna be updated uh, over time as new information becomes available. And also uh, Federal Highway is also seeking public input on the implementation of the uh, of the new bill as a request for information where anyone can go on and uh, leave a comment. So I will drop both of those links into the uh, the chat box shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of Gene? Okay, we'll move into regional partners. Cat, Eric. Yes, uh, wanted to thank everyone for the uh, resolution that you passed regarding uh, designating SRTA. Um, we had our second board meeting for SRTA yesterday, along with a uh, CAT board meeting as well, the, immediately following that. But um, one thing that we discussed, and I know, Steve, you've, you've talked, I believe, with uh, Jenny at PennDOT regarding the CAT bridge. Um, we're, as SRTA board, is looking to uh, find an owner for the bridge, essentially. The, um, I know back in 2014, uh, Gana Fleming did that cross-river connection study, and it was identified in there as a potential um, uh, rail trail or something that could uh, you know, bring uh, folks over from the uh, West Shore over to Harrisburg. Um, but the SRTA board doesn't really see the future for the bridge to be used for uh, bus or light rail use. 
So it really wouldn't be within our purview to maintain the bridge. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to be actively looking to uh, find someone to take the bridge ownership. That's really the uh, the only news I have, uh, other than the, I don't think you'll see any kind of change uh, noticeable regarding service. The, you know, service has been growing. Um, we have, um, uh, for the last three years, you know, uh, the uh, Rabbit Transit and uh, CAT have been working together. Uh, so I don't think you'll really see any change, uh, despite the fact that there's an SRTA board over uh, both CAT and Rabbit Transit. Certainly can take any questions you might have. Yeah, I'll just, hey, Eric, this is Steve. In, in response to your initial comments there, uh, you, you, you are right, but there's a pending uh, discussion with the secretary uh, about that would relate to ownership of that bridge. We've had to reschedule it twice now um, due to things that came up from the infrastructure bill. So uh, it's now been rescheduled for the beginning of the year. So hopefully, you know, we'll be able to get some answers on that in the very near future. Great. Okay, next would be Sarah and there's, is it Lewis? Yep, it's it's Lou. You guys can call me Lou, and I have Jamie okay. uh, sides here as well. Uh, just uh, just been listening. In. We don't have anything to add, but it looks like uh, you know I'm excited to see the the boost in the funding uh, for the infrastructure around the area, and I'm sure you guys have put it to good use. So uh, that and happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. Uh, SRTP. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple few uh, things from SRTP and the commuter services. Uh, first off, on a funny aside to uh, Eric and Beth, as I uh, conveyed to Rich Farr at the uh, earlier meeting this month, you know, welcome to the SRTP club as a, as a SRTP now welcomes the SRTA and uh, more acronyms. We can all get confused in the weeks ahead, but congratulations on that merger. Uh, from an outreach staff, uh, our team's been out working with our employers during the benefits and uh, healthcare fairs over the last uh, 30 and 45 days. It's a great interaction between our team and employees as they're renewing their healthcare benefits and looking for other ways they can save money in the year ahead. Uh, a couple quick names that you will all notice that we've been in touch with with meetings or events in the last month, uh, DHL, Harrisburg, Har uh, Hack Harrisburg, uh, UNFI in Carlisle and Harrisburg, PA Department of Health, WetFX, just to mention a few. Um, looking back since the last CATS meeting, uh, we did our college month promotion in October, uh, allows the students and faculty from colleges around the region to compete and track their green trips. Uh, Franklin and Marshall was the winner of that. Uh, in the month of November, we had our clash of the counties, again, allowing employees of our various carry, uh, county entities to have some friendly competition in their green trip tracking. Uh, we did have participants from Cumberland and Dauphin, as well as Berks, Franklin and Lancaster counties. Uh, and in the month of December, we have a clash of the career links. Uh, as you all know, help wanted signs are up all over. Uh, if there are individuals that are not able to work because of a transportation obstacle, uh, that's where commuter services comes in and tries to work with the career link offices to try and find options for those employees to be able to get themselves from their home to their job. And we'll continue to do that in the months ahead. Um, in light of time, I think my only other update is Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, unless there's any questions for me, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. And I think, Steve, you wanted to DCNR? Yeah, that, we don't have a representative from DCNR here, but I, I wanted to bring up that we had had some informal discussions with uh, some representatives from DCNR and mentioned that we anticipated doing an active transportation plan uh, in the upcoming year. And they have uh, been very encouraging and worked with us on uh, application for some funding that they have available. They have um, apparently funded uh, some, some similar work in Lancaster and in the Lehigh Valley. And uh, we've had a Zoom call with them. They've been working with us and we, we anticipate making a submission to their grant program here in the spring uh, and hope to secure some money from them in supporting our effort to have an active transportation plan for the region. So I just wanted to throw that out there uh, 
as you know, indicating their support for the kinds of things you're trying to do. Very good, thank you. Legislative reports. I know we have a number of legislative offices on the call. Is there anybody that would like to comment? Okay, I'll move into local reports. Um, City Harrisburg, Wayne, Jeff. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, board members. This is uh, Wayne Martin. Uh, I guess uh, from the uh, city ongoing construction project perspective, the biggest news uh, this week was that the roundabout at 7th and Riley uh, opened to traffic on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, there's a little, little growing pains there. I, I don't know how many multi-lane roundabouts there are in the state of Pennsylvania, but I think this is certainly one of the first in the area, uh, certainly the first in the city. Uh, has two northbound lanes, and then one of the southbound lanes drops off uh, at, at the intersection of Riley. So uh, I encourage everyone to go, um, you know, give, give it give it a shot, you know, uh, see what you think of those improvements. Uh, I guess we win the bet. We open before the federal courthouse, uh, you know, so I guess bragging rights is all we get out of that. Uh, the second street um, two-way uh, construction is a uh, winter shutdown. Uh, I know there was a a project meeting uh, th this week as well on that project um, about the timeline for the switch to two-way. I don't have any uh, details on that timeline at this time, but uh, at the next meeting, I'll, I'll, I'll be certain to uh, give the uh, committees the update and the, and the current schedule for that switch over. And then lastly, in the design, uh, design area, we have the RTP Capital Gateway Project uh, that uh, we're working on the uh, lining grade uh, comments from the lining grade and safety submission and everything's on schedule. We'll have the design field review submitted uh, early 2002. And so we're on schedule for that let date of uh, October 20 of 2022. That's all I had. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then uh, from my perspective, Jeffrey Knight here, um, just providing the same update I provided to the technical committee that uh, the city um, adopted their um, a new comprehensive plan, first time in 47 years, uh, back at the end of November. So um, I don't know that there's any immediate impact on you know our projects, but hopefully now we'll have that document as a guidance for uh, what types of projects uh, we submit going forward into the future. Um, and uh, you know we're we're you know excited to have that document uh, finalized and to uh, have that guidance um, for how we're going to be using money, especially with all this new um, federal money um, coming down the pipeline. Thank you. Any other municipalities? Okay. Other business? Mr. Memmi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just wanted to thank uh, all the members of the coordinating and technical committees, and, and in particular, the HATS staff. This will be my last meeting as a member of the uh, HATS family. Uh, I, I've had a good time. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you. Wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, sir. Skip, I'd be remiss if I didn't make a comment. Um, you know, I just want to say, I, I believe it's what, 20 years we've been working together here at HATS and you and I have worked outside of HATS for those number of years. Um, I want to thank you for your dedication, um, your creativity at times, um, and, and your, your willingness to work not only with this committee, but the technical committee and the review committee and making things move forward. You've actually been a great asset to this region, to Derry Township, to Dolphin County over the years. And I know you're moving on to a new venture. Uh, they will be blessed to have you there. And I wanna thank you for everything you've done. Thank you very much. Any other business? You know, I'll just... Uh highlight that I brought up the schedule um, for, for next year on the screen. This is part of your packet. 
Um, so not only the meeting dates that you want to mark down, but uh, as we've been discussing throughout the meeting, kind of key agenda items for each of those meetings uh, moving forward. So it'll certainly be a busy year, especially with this new funding. Um, but uh, please put those dates uh, on your calendar for 2022. Is there anything else to be brought up by the board? Well, I wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, be safe, uh, and we'll see you next year. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second, Larry. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Godspeed, thank you. Thank you, Chairman.